Well, hello there. I didn't see you come in. Make yourself at home. Have a drink. While I give some attention to some underappreciated characters and storylines that I personally love. And I hope you grow to love as well. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Matt's Minis. Uh, this week, we got the first episode of Swamp Thing in his official title from 1972 in November. Uh, if you remember from last week's episode, House of Secrets number 92, that was the first appearance of Swamp Thing, and that came out in July of 1971. So about a year in between these two. Um, I guess, you know, fans really liked that issue, and so they decided, hey, let's bring that character back. Everybody likes him. So... Um, First things first, the cover, we got uh, Swamp Thing, you know, popping out of the water of the swamp, and he's all, he looks different than he did in the House of Secrets. In the House of Secrets, he was like more kind of like an, uh, like, he's like a green, kind of mossy, look more sad and whatnot. This one, he is jacked. Uh, swamp Thing's been on the TRT, apparently. Uh, he's He's got like big muscly arms um under that green but he also has like roots that kind of look like veins popping out where uh you know veins on a muscly guy would be um and he is looking like he's gonna attack this guy he's got a gun and there's a lady that you know looks like she's his hostage so swamp thing's gonna save this lady um so that's the cover. Great Bernie Wrightson art. And I should say, this is also written by the same creative team that did the original um, Swamp Thing story. So it's uh, Len Wein is the writer. Bernie Wrightson is the artist. So we start off in the swamp, of course. Where else would you start a Swamp Thing comic? And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little rainy, a little dark. Um, you see uh, You see a car driving down a road you know it's got like alligators and stuff and frogs and whatnot some of the wildlife that's in the swamp and um and then you see swamp thing looking at the car in front of a barn and swamp things thinking you know uh i will get them those who killed me when they return um uh, i'll be waiting for them so you know he uh he's he's waiting he this is like setting up he's already swamp thing at the very beginning of this but he starts thinking back. He remembers, you know, what happened, and it cuts to uh, a nice blue day. It's not rainy anymore. It's a nice sky, and uh, we see um, the same red car pull up, and out comes the scientist team of uh, it's like a couple, and we get uh, Alex. I'm sorry, Alec Holland is the the name of this man. If you remember back in the last episode, uh, the gentleman that was Swamp Thing was named Alec, Alex Olson, and this is Alec Holland. So they're not the same um, person, but that'll get explained later on as we get into the uh, some of the Alan Moore stuff and whatnot um, from the 80s. But if we see him and his wife, Linda, same name, Linda, as the first uh, appearance issue. And then we get a, a, a government man named Lieutenant Cable who's uh, taking him to this uh, farmhouse um, that they set up for him. And we find out that the government has um, taken this scientist team to work on a project. We don't know what, but they definitely want them in seclusion. And they, he's, uh, Lieutenant Cable says there'll be like a police car around every like half hour or so. So, you know. They, they don't want to lose the merchandise, he says. So we know that they're working on something that's kind of like top secret. And uh, cut to them, the scientist team, they're working on a, uh, on their project. And we see what they're working on is some kind of uh, restorative formula for, like a super formula for growing plants. So he says, Alex, or Alex says um, that this will make, you know, gardens out of sweltering deserts. It basically can make any plant life grow anywhere. Um, and right when they kind of make this breakthrough and they're testing it, um, Dr. Holland gets a knock on the door and he answers it. And uh, there's some shady looking fellows. There's three guys behind the door and uh, one of them introduces himself, the one in front, as Mr. Ferret. And he says, you know, my associates would like a word with you in private. Basically, he starts to threaten dr holland and says like you know 
we're interested in purchasing your bio restorative formula. Um, you know, we're going to authorize you a, a blank check, you know, with, for the exclusive rights. So we get, uh, you know, Holland's basically like, no, I don't want any of that. It's not for sale. And uh, Ferret's like, hey, Bruno, convince the man. So basically they're going to beat him up. And then luckily in the nick of time, we get uh, a police car driving up, a patrol car, um, like Lieutenant Cable said. So the, the uh, gangsters or the people threatening them, you know, they walk away, but they say, you know, you save yourself a lot of trouble if you accept this generous offer of ours. Then we see Lieutenant Cable, you know, they call, they call him in. They say, hey, these guys were there um, threatening us. And basically, Cable tells them that, you know, you guys are commodities and people are willing to kill you. That's why, you know, the government's here to kind of protect you. And basically, just call him if anything, you know, if they ever come back and whatnot. Um, and then Linda and Alec are kind of debating whether Lieutenant Cable was being melodramatic or overly dramatic you know, saying like, well, they wouldn't kill us for it, would they? And then they get another, you know, they hear something outside. Um, and then when they open the door, Alec gets his gun. He's like ready to shoot. It's like a shotgun. And they see, oh, it's just like an old hound dog. That's, oh, he's so cute. But what they don't know is that this dog has a bug in his ear. So meaning, you know, a radio transmitter. We get a, uh, a shot of a guy listening in. We don't know who he is, but he's definitely hearing everything they're talking about. And uh, he says, you know, Louisiana Blue to Mr. E. Everything's proceeding as schedule. And then it cuts to a man sitting in a chair uh, in a very dark room. And he's talking to the guy on the radio. And we we see that he's like petting a like a humanoid kind of monkey or ape creature. And... He wants this formula. He's basically like send Ferret around to get this formula. Uh, um, if you know, if he if he doesn't cooperate, just kill him. Um, so, next panel, Ferret is back at the door, but Alec is prepared this time. He's got his gun pointed directly at him. You know, he's like, save it for the boys in blue, Ferret. I don't want any of your. Uh, I don't want your money. Can't be bought. And before Alec can do anything, which is kind of funny. He's got a gun pointed right at him. So Alec is not a very, uh, I don't know. He's, a, he's not a trigger happy fellow. He's not very prepared for this situation, I guess. He is a scientist, so that's probably why. But uh, Bruno just smacks him right in the face before he can do anything. And you see uh, one of the guys pull out some dynamite. And while Alex kind of like knocked out on the floor, they put the dynamite under a table. And... Uh, you see uh, Alec kind of wake up and no one's there. And he's like, what? That was weird. Like, I guess they skipped out. Um, I wonder why they, and then all of a sudden he hears ticking. He's like, what is that? Oh my God. I have to try to defuse it before. And right as he's reaching for the bomb, you just, the next panel is like a half page splash of boom. And, uh, <laughs> They got some great art of him running out of the shed. He's on fire, like completely on fire, his whole body. Um, you can't really tell it's him anymore. And there's three panels of him like running and running and running. And then he jumps into the swamp. Um, next panel is Linda at the funeral. So, you know, Alex has been killed and uh, she's super sad, of course, because her husband just died. And it doesn't seem like Matt Cable really cares that much. I mean, he cares enough, but he really wants that formula. Uh, he's trying to talk her, you know, into staying. And Lieutenant Cable is uh, basically kind of forcing her to continue. She's like, you know, of course the project must go on uh, regardless, doesn't it, Cable? And he's like, she's like, no one cares about the people that live or die here. And uh, Cable pretty much admits to her, uh, afraid so, Linda. With Alec gone, you're the only one left who can handle it. So, chop, chop. Let's get this formula going. So, then we cut to uh, a, a rainy night, um, which we're, I'm kind of assuming is the same rainy night as the beginning of this uh, issue. And you see a frog on some mud in the swamp. And you see the mud start to bubble. And you see a hand, a green hand come out of the mud. And uh, basically, Swamp Thing is clawing himself out of the mud and the, and the muck. 
and he looks a uh, you know he starts off a little bit disoriented, kind of off balance, but uh, as he as he kind of gets his whereabouts, um, he you know stands up tall, and it says a muck encrusted shambling mockery of life, a twisted caricature of humanity that can only be called the Swamp Thing, and so uh, you know he walks back to the uh, farm. He knows he's got to help Linda, and we see Lieutenant Cable is there with Linda. I assume protecting her somewhat from the gangsters that might return. And Swamp Thing's just kind of waiting because he knows the bad guys are gonna come back. Ferret's gonna come back with his guys. So, so the dog is in, in with them, and he in his ear. I guess he can, he can hear the radio frequency too. <laughs> he can hear them talking, and the and the voice on the other end is like, "Run, dog! Follow your master's voice." So the dog runs out before Matt Cable can shut the door. And, uh, he, so Matt runs after him like you stupid mutt, what are you doing? And before Matt can realize what's going on, he gets hit in the head with a shovel. He gets knocked out. So then Linda's like, what was that noise outside? Uh, you know, cable, is that you? Did you find the dog? And it is not cable. It is ferret back again. And, uh, <laughs> and we see the, the dog has, you know, uh, in his haste to run out. Uh, has gotten stuck in the swamp and swamp thing nicely, you know, raises the dog out of the swamp and uh, saves its life. But right after he does that, he hears blam and he knows the worst has happened. He runs into the, the shed and he sees Linda and she's there on the floor and she's dead. She's been shot by ferret and that's it. Swamp thing is pissed off. So he just runs through the, the wall and, uh, and he doesn't even know if he can talk at this point. He, he's thinking stop. Um, and then ferret sees him as he's driving away and he's like, what is that thing? And then, um, swamp thing still thinking stop. And then in his mind, he says, I said, and the next page is the full page of him yelling, stop. And he smashes the front of the car and uh the bad guys kind of fly out through the windshield this is before seatbelts i guess so so um they just fly out and swamp thing just starts to beat the shit out of them um takes bruno first and then uh he you know is getting shot at by ferret who didn't get cut to pieces by the windshield or in his i guess okay uh for the most part and so he's shooting at swamp thing um who just Basically took out, I mean, you're, you're going to assume he knocked him out, but it looks, I don't know, it looks, he probably killed him. Um, he probably killed Bruno. And so um, he shoots six shots. He's got a revolver. And by the time Swamp Thing reaches him, it's click, click, click. And he just says, Fair just says, oh my God. And uh, Swamp Thing <laughs> thinks to himself, you can't kill a dead man, Ferret. And so he's about to, I guess, do the finishing blow. Or actually, it looks like, I mean, Ferret's limp in his in his arms now, so I guess he killed him somehow, or I don't know, maybe knocked him out. But I'm pretty sure he killed him. He just killed Ferret. Just killed his wife. So, um, then we uh, we see another shot hit him in the shoulder, and he turns around to be like, "What is that?" Um, and it turns out it's Matt Cable, and he says, "You're under arrest for murder. You're coming with me." And uh, Swamp Thing's like, mm, "No, Cable, I'm not afraid." And so he just basically walks out and Matt Cable's like, no, you come back, you monster, come back. And uh, Swamp Thing just, just pieces out, goes back to the swamp. And then um, Matt Cable yells back at him, um, next time I'll get some answers. Do you hear me, monster? Do you hear me? You know, Swamp Thing hears him, but he doesn't give a fuck. He's Swamp Thing. He can't be killed by bullets and he's not threatened by uh, Lieutenant Cable anymore. So... Uh, he walks back and just he walks straight into the water because he swamped thing. He lives in the swamp now. And then we see uh, cuts to a panel of like a looks like a big table or some kind of mirror with like all these demons around it or like humanoid monsters. And uh, swamp thing is kind of like a vision in this mirror. And you see a hand pointing to it. And, and this voice says, they're my pets is the one we have spent years searching for. There is the one we must have. Fetch him, my pets. Bring him to me. So we get a nice little setup for the uh, second issue right there. 
And uh, who is this man? What does he know about Swamp Thing? Why has he been searching for him? We don't know. So tune in next time. Uh, if you got any comments or questions, feel free to email me at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word, at gmail.com. And until then, stay swampy. Thank you.